series on what happens when the power of God's power comes in the life of a believer. And we begin with the promise of power for believers. And uh, don't be mistaken about the, about the power uh, that is given to us when God's Spirit comes into the life of a believer and empowers us. The purpose of power is to preach the gospel. And I know that uh, folks like to split hairs about that. And they say, well, you know, there's the ministry of, the, of God's Spirit is a great deal, has a great deal of other ministries. But you know, Jesus said that when God's power comes upon you, ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And uh, we are not in need in this life of self-edification so much as we are in need of serving God. And that God has a lot for us, doesn't he? Isn't it precious that you and I get to have personal time and fellowship with the relationship with God? That's what we'll be doing for eternity. We'll be in fellowship with God, worshiping him for eternity. And that's a wonderful privilege on the part of a believer. But we don't need to be in this world for that purpose. God doesn't need us to have the power of the Spirit and have God's Holy Spirit in us to fellowship with him in this life. We are on this earth to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every believer has a purpose. And if you don't know what your purpose is, start winning souls and it'll become very specific right away. You know, many individuals wonder, they're waiting for God to use or God to lead, God to direct. And I just promise you that your purpose in life is related to preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to the lost and seeing individuals come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. And your purpose, that is your purpose, and the specifics of it are uh, directly for you and not the same for anyone else. God has a plan for your life. He is concerned about you as an individual. But friend, uh, God's, the power of God's Spirit is not just simply for us to have discernment or for us to I uh, have an understanding of the scripture or for us to be comforted or for us to fellowship with him though we have that privilege the reason we are here is to serve the Lord and a, not, a Christian a believer who's not serving the Lord is not pleasing God and is not accomplishing God's plan for his life and so make no mistake don't misunderstand I'm not this evening trying to pigeonhole the power of God's spirit into one thing and say God's Holy Spirit only works this way or in one way uh, God's, uh, the Holy, God the Holy Spirit is a person, and it works in a lot of ways, and, and just the same way that would be uh, inaccurate or improper for me to pigeonhole you as a person. You ever met somebody who just thinks that you're all about one thing? That's all that they think? I mean, it's like <laughs> you appreciate that they appreciate that part about you, but it's like they don't think there's anything else to you. They don't realize that you eat, sleep, and breathe, and enjoy life uh, uh, in other ways. They just think this is all that you are. Yeah, try being a preacher sometime, and some people think that a preacher just wants to preach all the time. I, I do know preachers that really just love to preach a lot, and, and they're very, very passionate about it. And I, I, I love preaching. I love the opportunity that God's called my life to preach, but I'm a person too, and there's more than one aspect or element to me. You get to know me. We well, probably better not get to know me unless uh, you have a great deal of patience and you're very forgiving. But uh, if you'd like to do that, then you're free and welcome to. I'm a person. And God, the Holy Spirit's a person as well, and so He's not just a robot. He's not just um, he's, he's not just able to do one thing. He can do more than one thing, and so He has a great amount of ministry uh, to us as Christians. And so I understand that, but I just want to say that His job, the job in which He uh, wants to accomplish, and that our job is to preach the gospel, and God, the Holy Spirit. Almost every ministry he has through and in us is connected with preaching the gospel. Uh, he, uh, he does the convicting. Hey, you, ever, you ever spoke in truth to somebody and watched God's Spirit just speak to them? And here you are, and you're not doing, you're not saying anything extraordinary or extra special. But you just spend some time, and you just talk to God. And you say, God, I want to be used of you, and I want to speak to this person, and I need you to talk to him. And you pray and you examine yourselves, as the Scripture says, and make sure there's not anything that would keep you uh, from being empowered by God's Spirit. And when you do that, you go and you speak to somebody, just very simply. You could say something like, excuse me, I wonder if I could speak to you a second. And you'll watch, boom! The, you know, you'll see just amazing results. Hey, is it words that you said? Most of the time what happens when you ask somebody, if you could speak to them for a moment. 
Most time people say, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear you know, whatever. And when God's Holy Spirit speaks to them, something just grips their heart and they're just kind of like, mm. yeah, yeah, I need, you know, I've been, that's the very thing I've been thinking about. Or I need to talk to somebody about, are you a preacher? Are you want to, uh, and, and it's just the response is different. Then you read, just, just read, you know, I just wonder if I could tell you about, uh, about how to know you're going to heaven. And a lot of would you people, are people heavenly minded normally speaking? No, but God's Spirit will speak to them. And then uh, they'll have an argument or they'll say something and God's Spirit will convict them. And he'll just talk to them and you give them an answer and you just think, man, I'm just so insufficient to persuade an individual. I mean, God's Spirit just, he just does the work. And uh, he's, he, so he has, has a great ministry of convicting individuals. Um, yeah, you always know what to say and what to do. No, God's Holy Spirit will tell you what to say and what to do. It's absolutely amazing uh, that I, I don't think I've ever said the same thing in leading someone to Christ. I don't think I've ever used the same, you know, I don't have a memorized this, say this and this and this and that, use this verse and this verse and this verse. And God's Spirit will just lead you. You know, somebody, it's amazing how, you know, God's Spirit can give you the verse that you need. And he can give you the discernment, the words to say. You have no idea. You don't know the person. We, we're so judgmental because we look on the outward appearance and we judge a person. We think, well, this is what's going on with them. Usually you have no idea. I'll tell you, most people are a mask. Most people are masquerading. They're pretending. And you may think that you're just so intelligent and so discerning that you can tell. I want to just tell you something. Please don't be discerning about me because those people are really annoying. I have to say, yeah, I had somebody come. I really feel this about. You. Just don't even try that with me, because those people are usually so far off base. And don't do it with visitors in our church. Don't get, don't get, uh, you know, you know. Can I? I think I, I, I discern something about you. I've seen that happen. Those people never come back to our church again because they can be greatly offended. I'm thinking of some instances in particular that if I told you about them, you'd laugh along with me. You know what I'm saying. So don't be offended at me about saying that. But God, the Holy Spirit, speaks to people as individuals. But I'm just telling you, all these ministries that God's Spirit has are either either part of preparing us to preach the gospel, uh, making sure that we're well enough to preach the gospel, or, or preparing to empower us. But they ha it has to do with the saving of souls. And so as we begin the study in the book of Acts, we find that when the gospel is preached in the fullness of power, the end result is that people get saved. Is, does, do supernatural things happen? Yes, they speak in tongues, so much so that men out of every nation under the earth who live and dwell at Jerusalem, devout men, devout Jews, who are there at the day of Pentecost, hear the gospel preached in their own language, are amazed by it, a crowd accumulates, the gospel is preached in great power, a very convicting message that uh, points out to them their sin, points out to them their rebellion, points out to them uh, that they are the ones who crucified Jesus Christ, who was their Redeemer, their Messiah, and leaves them saying, And men and brethren, what should we do? And they, and they say, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And they got saved, and it happened over and over and over again. So much so that there's this great uh, dwelling of believers at Jerusalem. Do you know that sometimes we have times in our life, and by the way, I'm not in excusing inactivity uh, with regard to soul winning. We have times in our life when it seems as though the masses aren't coming to Christ. Now, I think that every Christian ought to have time when people are just getting saved in their life, and there's no excuse for that not to occur in your life. But, you know, there are some times when we find that uh, God is moving or using us in a direct way, and he's, it's in preparation both of ourselves and in preparation of the people that we're to preach the gospel to. And that's what we're going to see this evening in our text. So look with me, if you will, to Acts chapter 22. And uh, this is, I believe, the last time that we met together in the book of Acts that we looked at. Paul's desire of being bound in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. The multitude of prophecy that he received with regard to the danger of going to Jerusalem. And that it wasn't a good idea because he certainly would be bound and imprisoned. And this was going to be a time of great danger for Paul. And so he was warned. Uh, he knew that that it was dangerous for him to go to Jerusalem. By the way, he hadn't had a good ministry there. Matter of fact, if you read these several chapters, chapter 22, 3, 4, 5, you find that uh, by Paul's own testimony himself, he was so uh, poorly received that he went and preached the gospel to the Gentiles at Jerusalem. And so it was a place where he wasn't well received. He was never well received. Um, he knows he, he was a Pharisee.